on Film 4 now, American Splendor is set to roll. Here on 4, no sacred cows on Bremner, Bird and Fortune. Well, there's a few moments to spare before the next round of redundancies, so there's just time to tell you about one or two of the changes going on here at the BBC. Newsnight is moving to an urban regeneration zone outside Leeds to take advantage of a two-year rent freeze for new businesses. Last of the summer wine will move from Homeforth to Hungary as part of a European ethnic diversity capital startup scheme. Monarch of the Glen is to be downsized to Monarch of the BBC Manchester Star Car Park and Holby City is to be closed down and redeveloped into starter homes. David Dickinson is being outsourced from Ipswich. Dale Winton is to be broken up for scrap. And Anne Robinson's facelift is to be declared a net loss and offset against profits. Finally, Saturday morning's popular Dick and Dom show will remain, but Dick and Dom will be split up. Dick recording his bits from a broom cupboard in the programme support unit in Bristol, and Dom relocating to a trading estate in Droitwich, with the entire BBC Sport, Comedy, Education, Learning, Drama and News departments. So, lots to look forward to on the balance sheet, but now it's time for the news with Ernst & Young. <laughs> Thank you. Easter again. And the Queen was out and about with the pensioners on Maundy Thursday for the service where she hands out those strange things which are symbolic but have no real value. Two tickets to Windsor Guildhall. <laughs> Front row, good seats. <laughs> Meanwhile, as the Vatican announced that the Pope has serenely abandoned himself to the will of God, there's little sign of Tony Blair serenely abandoning himself to the will of anybody. <laughs> or indeed naming the election date. You never know. We could get a big announcement next Friday. About the election, I just want to say, April Fool. <laughs> Back in Tory central office, they're recovering from a suicide bomb attack by their deputy chairman, who let slip, who let slip that conservative cuts would be more than they'd admitted. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we've been rumbled. <laughs> Elsewhere, as one of Britain's longest-running fraud trials collapses, the other big fraud trial has yet to begin, putting Blair, Campbell and the rest of the government on trial for their use of intelligence leading up to the war. <laughs> the government... Well, I say the government. Jack Straw. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> old Squinty Straw announced uh, the government's big shake-up of intelligence this week in response to Lord Butler's report. Yeah, I'll tell you what should happen. Every time Tony Blair talks about intelligence, you should see a little bubble, like on those Intel Inside adverts, going ding, 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 ding. <laughs> so you'd know not to trust him. <laughs> you know, the information that I'm getting from the security services, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Look, the advice is perfectly clear. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I'm going to get on and win this election. And I look forward to working once again with Gordon. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> well, so far, we've got Camilla. She's a definite. Jonathan Dimbleby, if he can make it. Oh, and a couple from Leicester, who I met on holiday a few years ago. I sort of kept in touch with. What about Andrew? Um, ah, he's booked in for 18 holes at Carnoustie. He promised he'd make it back if he can, but he's having trouble changing the tea time. <laughs> Anne was on voicemail, hasn't called back. William said he'd try and drop in, uh, don't bank on it. Oh, and Harry's got us down as a second pencil, so if Jordan cancels her birthday bash, I suppose there's a chance he might turn up. <laughs> I tried to of Gloucester, he said go through his agent. What about Princess Michael of Kent? Uh, I've got her down as a maybe, but um, she wants ten grand. <laughs> oh, and, um, and Queen Beatrix of the Netherlands, uh, she can make it, but she needs us to fix up a hire car. Um, there must be somebody else. What about the bloke who gate-crashed the last party we had here? <laughs> oh, he'd come again, I'm sure, if we asked him. And there's those fathers for justice. Oh, well, I suppose they're always clambering around the outside of the palace. I suppose they'd be grateful for the chance to come in. Have you tried, Tony Blair? No. No, you're right. No point in it any worse than it already is. Yeah, no, no, I'm sure it'll be all right. Oh, well, anyway, there's always, uh, there's always you and Dad. Ah, oh, yes, I didn't even talk to you about that. <laughs> well, you as well. Oh, no, 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 I can be there. Uh, well, as long as I'm away by seven. There's another wedding on Coronation Street that night, and I'm not going to think about it for anyone. No, it's your father. He may not be 
able to make it. He's abroad and he isn't sure about flights back. What? But he's got his own plane. Dear Bandit, how can you do the tickets? You have to stay over Saturday night to qualify for the discount. Oh, this is just a bloody farce. I wish I'd never started this business in the first place. You mustn't think that. That's for us to think. It's so <laughs> ghastly. There is one way round it. I know it's a bit drastic, and you probably won't agree with me, but look. Do we have to invite her? Yes, she's the bride! <laughs> it's like, heaven's sake, what have you got against her? For once in my life I've got someone who makes me happy, and you're determined to spoil it all. Now, Charles, that's not fair. It's not just me. Don't you know the papers? According to the latest poll, 93% said they didn't want to see Camilla made queen. What about the other 7%? They didn't understand the question. <laughs> Doesn't that just tell you everything you need to know about this dumbed-down, miserable, envy-ridden, spoil-sport, runty little country of ours? It's all hello and OK and big brother and football is bloody wise. Besides, I thought we sorted that out. She's going to be called Princess Consort. Ghastly. Sounds like something they make in Coventry. No, I'm sorry, you've been rumbled on that one. The government's confirmed that if she's not to be queen, they'll have to pass a new law. What? But they said there wouldn't be a problem. And you trusted them? Their Labour, Charles. Hello? <laughs> well, they've lost my vote. You haven't got one, Charles. It's something we have in common with criminals and lunatics. <laughs> I'm not the only thing when I look around this place. Look, why do you have to get married here anyway? Well, where else do you suggest? Oh, I don't know. Vegas? Vegas? Honeymoon chapel, two nights in the Lover's Nest Motel, heart-shaped bath, complimentary champagne. But for heaven's sake, I'm the future king of England. Ah, yes. <laughs> that's something else I've been meaning to talk to you about. Right, that's it. I'm calling off the whole damn thing. <laughs> At the coming election, the country will have a clear choice between more wasteful spending, more borrowing, and more tax under Mr. Blair, or better value for money, less spending, less borrowing, and less tax under the Conservatives. As a politician, it is my duty, I might almost say my solemn duty, in fact, yes, I will say it, my solemn duty to reflect the concerns of the people of this country. Not just their concerns, but their very genuine concerns. And of course, not absolutely all the people of this country. I don't include the people who are here illegally, who abuse our benefit system, <laughs> or who refuse to share our values. I mean ordinary, decent, hard-working families. It's a concern for their concerns that concerns me. <laughs> this is particularly true at election time. Indeed, it is only true at election time. <laughs> So I want to say how profoundly disturbed I am about waiting lists, asylum seekers, school dinners, gypsies, council tax, and hospital bugs. I want to say that, but some other bastards have got there first. So as far as I can see, that leaves me with abortion. Abortion is an issue that I felt very strongly about since I saw an opinion poll saying a lot of people feel very strongly about it. Termination at 24 weeks, 24 weeks is outrageous. Quite obviously it should be less. Or more, I'm not quite up to speed <laughs> on the nuts and bolts of it yet. But I do realise that my policy, whatever it turns out to be, might have profoundly serious consequences. First and foremost, could it lose me the women's vote? <laughs> That is why I say to women everywhere, I share your pain. <laughs> I respect your choices. And to demonstrate my sincerity in this, I have become pregnant. Hi. You know, 
Easter means different things to different people, and that's fine. I've always felt Easter shouldn't be a party political issue, it should be a matter of individual conscience. That's why we don't vote on it, we don't campaign on it, it simply happens. People go to church, spend time with the family, give thanks that with the passing of Lent we can once again enjoy whatever little luxury it was that we decided to give up. <laughs> Whether it was chocolate, smoking, or in my case, George Bush. <laughs> As a Christian, which I am, unlike the leader of the opposition, but I don't really want to get into that. <laughs> Each year, I like to revisit the Easter message. And, you know, it's a funny thing when you think about it. I mean, here's this man, this incredibly special man, put on earth to live amongst us, who does wonderful things, but who is, in the end, so tragically misunderstood. Imagine how it must have felt to be betrayed by one of his own disciples. To have the crowd who greeted his triumphant arrival with such joy turn against him, accuse him of all manner of things, and in the end, when given a choice between him and a common criminal, cast their vote against him. <laughs> you know, how do you think that feels? Pretty bad, I should think. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to make too much of this, but having spent his life doing good works, preaching, and yes, even working miracles, to know, as he surely must have done, that one of those 12 people around that table would betray him. I mean, come on, that's got to hurt. <laughs> and if the same thing were to happen today, how would those people feel? Those people who had seen the Son of God move amongst them, but yet had failed to appreciate it. <laughs> I can't help thinking they'd have felt pretty bad about it. Luckily, of course, with today's modern communications and today's modern communications director, we can all see for ourselves when miracles happen. When 28% more people have access to health care. When the dead are brought to life again and given a job in Brussels. When just five loaves and two fishes are enough to feed the entire school population. And as for the criminal who is set free, we can look into his eyes, we can look into his soul, and thanks to the Freedom of Information Act, we can look into his past record, and we know that given the choice between him and the saviour of mankind, we wouldn't make the same mistake again. Or would we? <laughs> it's a question that's often on my mind, particularly at Easter, particularly this year. And I still don't really know why. But I do believe, and this isn't something I really want to get into, but I really do believe that if people had the choice again, they'd do the right thing. <laughs> Good night. At PC World, a half-price exclusive. McAfee's award-winning internet security suite, plus quick clean, only $29.99. As one of the world's foremost designers, I need space to carry the tools of my trade. The Ford Focus has inner space, outer space, and outer, outer space. This is my genius box. So, the tools of your trade are all packed, sir. I'm watching you. Sometimes if I get into a space that is too small, I weep. I'm giving it back to you, babe. Oh, it's a first at last. My extra thing. And the answer to your banking dreams. I'm so hot, so cool. Your shining star. See, I'll give you money back. With this debit card, it's true, it's only on your purchases. But here's a fact, other banks can't deny. There's only one account that pays back a large amount. It's the first and last, my extra thing. Only Halifax gives money back on your current account. Save £20 on this self-propelled petrol mower. It's price reversed to under £130. Knew you'd be pleased. MFI's biggest spring sale is now on, with all sale items less than half price, plus 20% off throughout the store. The place to buy is MFI. 
I never seem to really hit it off with women. Well, you're not going to, looking like that. Be more like me. Stylish, king of cool, trust me. Restyle Image Consultants, my friend really, really needs your help. Let me do the talking. Hi. Hi. Nice That's shirt, I like it. Right, well, oh dear. Oh, I can see what you're after, but green is so not your colour. Mm -hmm. And that beard just, well, it's just got to go, hasn't it? Yellow pages, whatever you want, just yell. One anarchic performer meets one anarchist billionaire. Says here in the headlines, I want to clone 2,000 Alpha Yens. A few hundred, maybe. Really? Keith Allen gains exclusive access to Muhammad Al Fayed. You see here? What's my face? It? You're fired. Thursday at 10 on 4. Kids' school slipped in the rankings. Get rid of the lot in charge, get someone else in. Local hospital coming in for criticism, get someone else to run it. Next week is National Get Rid of Them Week, a government-backed initiative to get Britain back on its feet. Cat underperforming, get rid of it and try another. Wife not keeping up with the housework, bring in a new one to run things. Not happy with your own appearance? Act now and replace yourself with someone else. When things fail, don't fix them. Just get rid and let someone else have a go. Please note the Get Rid of Them initiative does not apply to the present government. I've made up my mind. I'm going to get a shotgun licence. I don't think that's very wise, Leslie. That your eyes aren't what they used to be. Well, I have my eyes closed when I press the trigger, so it won't make much difference, really. <laughs> but I mean, what do you want a gun for? Oh, are you and Audrey going through one of your rough patches? No, no, no. It's, 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 it's nothing to do. It's intruders. Mm. Intruders. I'm allowed to shoot intruders now, aren't I? I mean, under the guidelines. Yes, yes, you are. But you must make sure that your actions are, what, proportionate and not excessive. Oh, well, <laughs> I don't understand that. I mean, how can you shoot somebody proportionately? <laughs> I mean, you're supposed to make the bullet come out slow if there are <laughs> mitigating circumstances. Or... Have you had many intruders? Because uh, you were pretty quiet. Yes, no, I haven't had any intruders. Oh. None, none at all, in fact. No. But I will. I mean, I know I will. Not... Do you know who they are? Oh, yeah, I know exactly who they are. They're, <laughs> they're uh, canvassers, you know, political... <laughs> the general election is going to be an absolute nightmare. But you can't shoot them, Leslie. They're part of the democratic process. Look, I'm not having it. Look, last, last time there was a council elections, yes. I, I was in bed asleep, see? Mm. And I, in the middle of the night, and I heard this terrible noise. Audrey. No, no, no. <laughs> no, it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't Audrey. Or the plumbing, or Audrey's plumbing. And it yes. was, it was, I didn't know what it was. I crept downstairs, you know, mm. carrying one of Audrey's training weights, and... and I opened the door and blow me it was a liberal democrat a chap from this is three o'clock in the morning and you said do I want to discuss their policy on paternity leave I mean I'm 72 years old <laughs> I know I know but the thing is uh, uh, Leslie in order to make an informed choice you have to listen to the audience well, and I don't the, think you realize what powers you have well I mean, what, I mean they don't take any notice of old people now nonsense it's a gray vote it's yes. you and me Leslie uh, and that's why Gordon Brown groveled so much to us in the in the budget well I you could grovel I could yes. grovel a bit more for my for my like <laughs> what well look he gave us a, a rebate on our council tax uh, for, for one year only, and it happened to be an election year. Yeah. I mean, bloody hell, why didn't he put it in a box, wrap it up in ribbon, and write a bribe on it? <laughs> but... <laughs> so you're... You're saying this, as it were, demonstrates you know, how important we are, is it? Well, yes, yeah. and, and, and much more now, because unlike most other people, People like you and me actually go out and vote. Yes, well, we are uh, public spirited, aren't we? Well, we are. Yes. And also, we don't have anything else to do. No. <laughs> no. And that's why we've been targeted more than we've ever been by the political well, parties. Well, that, that, that makes it, that'll make it worse. There'll be even more can canvassers coming, mm. coming round and, mm. and disturbing. And what's the point of it? We know what they're going to say before they start. The Labour Party will say, uh, what law would you like pass? Any yes. law? Yes. What can we frighten you with now? That's what yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll say. say. And the Tories will just say, is anybody in here with a medical condition? <laughs> well, I mean,
mean, don't turn your nose up at that. Or you could be famous for a whole day. It's, it's people power. I mean, think of Audrey's bladder. Oh, God, don't. <laughs> Audrey's bladder has been hanging over our heads for a year. And the hospital won't give us an appointment for the operation. Well, you, you'll use that as a, as a lever. You really? see, Aldrich's bladder could be another Mrs. Dixon's shoulder. Well, mm -hmm. how? How? Well, some political party is going to get hold of Aldrich's bladder... Yes. ...and run with it. Yeah. And, and one morning you'll wake up and find it all over the front page of the Daily Telegraph. <laughs> it could be a call celeb. You know, mm. the battle of Audrey's bladder. Well, <laughs> the last thing I want is for Audrey's bladder to turn into a political football. <laughs> um, yeah. But, I mean, this is our opportunity, Leslie. I mean, you know, we can be the power brokers in the next parliament. No, no, they, they, they'll just say, as soon as the election's over, they'll forget about us. They'll say these people are going to be dead soon. No. That isn't right, what? because what? science... I read this in the, in the Saga magazine. <laughs> yes. yes, I did. Uh, science is on the brink of being able to make us all immortal. Oh, no, that's, no they'll never do that. They'll no, never do it's, that. It's, it's happening already. I mean, there are some rich men, businessmen in America, who are having themselves frozen after they die, so that when science comes along with the answer, they can be brought back to life. Really? Yes. I mean, sometimes they, they freeze the whole body, and sometimes they just freeze the head. <laughs> the head? Just the head. So what happens? They wake, the head wakes up in a hundred years' time and says, yes. I'm just going to nip down to the post office. <laughs> well, I mean, how, do they, how does he do it? Well, I suppose they'll roll. No, that's, that's, that's not very likely, is it? No, it's not very likely. Of it? No. Because in, in a hundred years' time, there probably won't be a post office. That's probably <laughs> um, but it, I mean, uh, there hardly is one now. Hardly is one now, no. But there's not going to be much of a, of a social life if you're just a head. Is it? Well, I mean, I can't imagine me just as a head picking up some old lady and saying, would you like to go down to the Lyceum for a spot of... You know, a strictly ballroom. <laughs> it will look ludicrous. Yeah. The tango, the only bit of the tango I could do would be that. that <laughs> and then my hat would fall off. You know. That's true. But oh, on the other hand, the old lady who pick up, uh, she might be ahead as well. It's yes. more than likely. Yes. You'll yes, get on like a house on fire. Mm. Because two heads are better than none at all. <laughs> No, but you know, I mean, I don't know whether I can face living for... I mean, the idea of getting up for year, hundreds of years cleaning my teeth every morning, I couldn't yeah, stand yeah. it. And in any yeah. case, you know, we're old people, we're set in our ways. We, you know, we wake up, we wouldn't know where we were. Everything uh, would have changed yeah. so much in a hundred years' time. Well, some things won't have changed. Mm. I mean, Gordon Brown will still be Chancellor. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, thank you very much for seeing me, Mr Milburn. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a nice restaurant, isn't it? Yeah, very nice. Yeah. I think apparently it's owned by Berlusconi. <laughs> yes. so, very, very new labour. Yeah, very... I wanted to ask you... Um... I hope your paper's paying for this, by the way. We're oh, not, most certainly. not made of money. No, no. Why? I wanted to ask you on that score about the campaign. It's... Yes. It's not actually going all that well at the moment, is it? I mean, to be fair. I don't know why you say that. Well... Oh, it's no. Totally in control. Totally in control. It's going very well, I think. You know, really? absolutely. But delighted. Absolutely. You're not feeling a strain at all? No, no, not at all. Don't feel a strain at all. You know, it gets me away from home. Yeah. Have you met my partner, Ruth? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, well, I tell you, sometimes I'm glad to wake up in the morning knowing that I'm going to get out of home and see John Prescott and John Reed. Right. <laughs> you don't think um, you're off the pace at all since you've come? No, not at all. Don't forget, no. I had a very difficult job you yeah. know, before. It was very tough in government, wasn't it? No, I meant at home. Oh. Uh, you know, there was the washing yeah. up, drying up, yeah. putting away, schoolroom, 
all of that and you know cooking the meal in the evening and that takes its toll. Mm. I, what, I, what I missed was the rough and tumble. The rough politics. and tumble. Yeah, it's, it's you know the political jungle. You like that as you've come in back. In there with the apes yeah. fighting in the jungle. Getting it, you see your opponent, you've got him in your sights and you know you can throttle the life out of him and that's that's what I missed. But Gordon Brown aside, is there anyone else? You <laughs> that's a bit of a cheeky one isn't it? I, I can tell you this, you couldn't get a cigarette paper between me and Gordon Brown. Really? Yeah you ask Gordon Brown. You, yeah, actually don't. Don't. No. Don't ask Gordon Brown. No. So you think you're running quite a good campaign at the moment? It's nothing not, to fear. It's not for me to say, but as far as I'm concerned, God, very, very, very well. Very really? Well. Yes, I mean, Michael Howard can't keep coming up with all these subjects forever. What's it? Gypsies, abortion, all that. He's going to run out of issues. There's only so many things you can talk about. Well, those are the issues that get people animated, and oh, no, what's really? more, he only has to keep going till May the 5th. Well, we've only got your word for that. <laughs> really? Well, it could be June, could be July. October the 20th, November the 17th. So you're telling me that there may be a general election on Thursday, November the 17th? Listen, all I'm saying is we can have it whenever we like. You know, you're saying that campaign's going badly and, you know, the Conservatives are setting the agenda. It could all be part of the master plan. For all you know, we could be letting them come on to us, we could be letting them set the agenda just to let them run out of fire, run out of ammunition. It could all be part of a grand master plan. And is it part of a grand master plan? No, it's not. No. <laughs> Actually, we're not very good. <laughs> Could we have the bill, please? This is Flopsy the bunny. Flopsy likes you. Flopsy wants you to vote Conservative. <laughs> not that anything's going to happen to Flopsy if you don't. Why would it? But if it did. Flopsy's mother died last week. And her father. And all her brothers and sisters, too. Her entire family wiped out in one single tragic freak accident. <laughs> At least that's what they say it was. <laughs> You're the only friend she has now. Not that you should let that affect your vote. No, you vote for whoever you want. Flopsy won't come to any harm. Why should she? Please, vote Conservative on Labour Fair. Could you live with yourself if you didn't? This week, Channel 4 revealed the resignation letter of Elizabeth Wilmshurst, the Foreign Office lawyer who resigned, saying that invading Iraq would be a crime of aggression. Well, she can sod off, then. <laughs> the letter suggests that in the space of just a couple of weeks before the war, the Attorney General, Lord Goldsmith, apparently held the view that invading Iraq was illegal, then that it was legal but open to challenge, and finally that it had been legal all along. Oh, alas. <laughs> We got you there eventually. <laughs> so, what made Goldsmith change his mind? Well, for that, we have to ask another lawyer. The brilliant, the dashing, the spectacularly inept Jack Straw. <laughs> Whose job it was, well, actually, it was Harriet Harmon's, but Jack decided this was a job for Super Jack. Um, yes, um, cometh the hour, cometh the shifty bloke with the whitewash. <laughs> and when the government put him up, they really are clutching at straws. Jack... <laughs> I was in character. Jack <laughs> decided it was his job to explain why Lord Goldsmith had apparently changed his mind. Um, th there's a joke in the legal profession. Um, no, not, not me. <laughs> um, a, 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 much, a much better joke. Um, that if you ask advice from three lawyers, you'll get three different opinions. But what this means is we're actually incredibly fortunate to have Lord Goldsmith as Attorney General because he's so brilliant, he's so clever, that he can manage to give three different opinions <laughs> on his own. <laughs> if, only, if only he had said that. Instead, Jack Straw explained that what changed the legal argument was the fact that the UN wouldn't pass a second resolution authorising the invasion. Um, yeah, we, we were hoping that the UN would authorise the war with a second resolution, but then we found out that we didn't actually need a second resolution. I see. Um, and when did you find that out? Um, when we realised we weren't going to get one. <laughs> I see. So you were worried it might be illegal without a second resolution, but when the UN didn't come up with one, you decided it had been legal all along. Bingo. Um, <laughs> well, well, the Attorney General decided. <laughs> Um, not, not then, um, but um, eventually. In time for the war. Um, but <laughs> can, can, I, can I just, could I give you another explanation? Why? 
um, in case you're still having trouble with the first one. Um, <laughs> another reason for the change in the legal position was that more evidence was coming from Iraq that Saddam wasn't complying with the UN, which was one of the reasons for attacking him. Uh, hang on, hang on. I, I thought it was the only reason for attacking him. Well, well le legally, yes. Um, yes the, the, well, there were lots of other reasons which I won't go into um, because they're not very good ones and, and certainly not legal. But, um, <laughs> So, so, but legally, uh, our reason for attacking him was non-compliance, and as I told the House of Commons, we had more evidence of that. But uh, uh, hang on, hang on. The report from Hans Blix that week said that while cooperation by the Iraqis was not complete, it was accelerating. In other words, far from not complying, he was complying more. The opposite of what you told the House of Commons. You're not convinced by this, are you? <laughs> bloody well not. Anyway, why don't you just clear all this up by publishing the legal advice? Um, because, again, as I told the House, um, if the Attorney General's advice had to be published, um, it would be grave for government. What does that mean, grave? Um, well, I, I might lose my car, um, <laughs> my minister's salary, my, my reputation, and, and Tony might, might lose his job. Really? Well, that's just an opinion. Not my opinion. <laughs> I'm a lawyer. <laughs> At PC World now, a massive breakthrough. This high-spec Packard Bell Easy Note E2 laptop for an incredible 499. We've never seen a deal like it. It features a high-performance Intel Celeron M processor 350. It's Wi-Fi ready so you can connect to the internet without wires. It's even got a recordable DVD. Stocks are strictly limited, so hurry for the 499 laptop at PC World. PC World. The new seven-seat Verso. How Verso are you? You can have our friendly banter, our squeaky clean air, our lobster, lamb, the lava bread. You can have our souvenir furry rugby balls. But you're not having our mud. It's good mud. William, William Shatner! It's me! I'm here to take you guys to the all-brand challenge. Just one bowl a day for two weeks will help you feel great on the inside. Eat, eat, we'll talk later. Take the old brand challenge and see if you can feel great in a fortnight. Push, son, push. I can't shift it, Dad. One of you will have to get out. You get out. No, you get out. <laughs> oh. I think it's added. The post office now offers great value personal loans. Oh, that's good. I can sort it all out over the phone. It's quick and easy to apply, and a typical APR is just 6.9%. <laughs> oh, wicked! Stop matching them out, son. You'll scratch the new car. The post office. For the little things that make the big things happen. Can a shy scientist who loves his jumpers... This jumper is called Fire 2000. ...become a magician? It's going to be brilliant, but it's going to be terrifying at the same time. <laughs> Four weeks to do it, trained by the best in the world. Oh, I thought when he was doing the prepared stuff, he was uh, awful. Faking it. Physician to magician. Tonight at 10 on 4. Hello, and for our moment of worship this Easter, we've come to Canterbury to meet Archbishop Rowan Williams. Hello. <laughs> this Easter must be one of your busiest times of the year. Yes, it is. Yes. Well, there's the early service, followed by matins, then the main Eucharist, and after that, a special family service. And all of that, of course, in addition to my regular Sunday job at Ikea. <laughs> pretty busy there, too. But you do get a big turnout at Easter. Oh, yes, yes. It's, it's right up there with Christmas. Big box office. In fact, I think it was St Paul who first coined the phrase, bums on pews. 
But I do sometimes worry that in our consumer society, the true message of Easter is somehow lost. Well, yes, only this week there was a survey, wasn't there, revealing that astonishingly two-thirds of people do not know who you are. Fifty percent didn't know the true Christian meaning of Easter. Yes, it's, it's shocking, isn't it? Um, in fact, a little boy said to me only yesterday, he said, Archbishop, if it was so hot in Jerusalem, how come Jesus' Easter eggs didn't melt? <laughs> But of course, part of your job is not to turn those people away, but to encourage them in their faith. Absolutely. We like to encourage as many people as possible to turn to Christ. We're a very broad church. I think people tend to forget that the expression broad church does in fact come from the original English. Broad meaning broad, and church meaning empty building. <laughs> and that's what the Church of England has always been about. In a sense, we're a church for people who don't like religion in the same way that people who don't like music find themselves naturally drawn to Phil Collins. But doesn't that create problems when there are difficult moral issues? People are looking to you for guidance and leadership. Mm, yes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a tricky one there. <clears throat> I, I sort of leave that sort of thing to the boss. <laughs> I suppose recently you've had the extremely difficult problem of the homosexual clergy. You suspended the American church after they appointed a gay bishop, and just this week the Church of England in Scotland came out in support of gay clergy. Yes, yes they did. <clears throat> it's very difficult because, as you know, our brother churches in Africa take a very dim view of um, homosexuality. And um, the church in Africa represents a lot of people. Being heterosexuals, they do breed. <laughs> The clue's in the question. As a liberal Christian, I do have a certain sympathy with our homosexual cousins, but as leader of the church, I have to say, I'm sorry, but the numbers are against you. And that's leadership? Ooh. <laughs> <coughs> so, sorry. Next question. Turning to the issue of abortion. Well, I've said, and I said this very clearly in the Sunday Times, that there is a groundswell of distaste for the current law, and certainly it's something that I think we need to look at. Well, except that already some religious groups have threatened to kill people who carry out abortions. Um, yes. Um, whoo, um, very, very difficult. Um, <clears throat> and that's why we in the Church of England try not to take religion quite so seriously, or so literally. <laughs> Otherwise, we wouldn't allow people to eat shellfish or wear clothes mixing cotton and polyester or indeed work on a Sunday, because if they did, we'd have to kill them. <laughs> so in the meantime, we prefer to have a pick and mix, a la carte sort of religion. Suck it and see. Yes, <laughs> unless you're a homosexual. <laughs> she walks. She talks. She does both at the same time. And now she can be yours to own and enjoy in your own home. You don't have to be the president to enjoy your own Condoleezza doll. New from White House Leisure Miniatures, Condi comes complete with a whole range of outfits. Just like the real thing. There's Condi the Statesman, Condi the Concert Pianist. Like the original, Condi comes styled in 100% plastic. With her tough exterior and stain-resistant white clean finish, she's more than a match for action men all over the world. And with a special unique double-speak feature, Condi can say one thing and mean something else altogether, just like the real thing. You'll just love Condi from White House Leisure Miniatures, makers of My Little Tony. Good you know, do you know um, him yes. and um, yes. yes, and this is um, Hello, nice this you. is uh, yeah, yes, good. Um, yes. Do, you, as as head of recruitment, have you? I mean, yes. what what do you feel about the people you're getting? Well, it's a little bit disappointing, and I and I, I'm really at a loss to explain why, because we've been putting such a lot of effort and energy and attention into the television campaigns. Yes, mm. and I think largely they may be at fault because the picture we've painted of life in the army, which is one of uh, learning useful skills and uh, mm. paragliding and uh, surfboarding mm. and that yes. sort of thing, skiing, <laughs> skiing, and big thing. Yes, yeah. and uh, so naturally we are attracting people who are, are basically paragliders. The only thing is, of course, that uh, when people come into the army as paragliders or, or uh, snowboarders... We have thought of starting a, a regiment, particularly well, for well, the is, Royal that, yes. Paragliders. Well, the specialised regiment <laughs> <laughs> yes. we, we want, yeah. you know... Can I speak frankly? Yes, please uh, do. They're a shower. I don't know, can you? They are, you know, I think I can. They're a shower. You know, we end up just getting all these sort of people who, you know, want aloe vera massages and counselling and, 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 and why do so many people these days have nut allergies? It was unknown. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you find all this, uh, these accusations of, of, of bullying are working against recruitment? 
uh, to a certain degree, yes. Although, I mean, I have to say uh, that it's, it's not in entirely our fault that uh, this bullying takes place because that, from what little I know about training, as someone who only recently understood I was in, in charge of it, I think I can safely say that, uh, that bullying is probably the closest thing to training that we have. And I think it doesn't so. sound as many. I think so. It doesn't I mean, we all remember the times when we first went into barracks and had a bit of barbed wire in your bunks and a gas mm. mask and you were full of stink bombs and things. Yeah. It, was, it was just, uh, you know, barrack room change. High spirits. High spirits, yes. High spirits. yes. yes. So. Yes. Never did any of us any harm. No, quite. No. But on, on the other hand, the public, you see, is concerned. I'm afraid, I'm sorry to be a wet blanket here, but I mean, they do... Wet blankets, that was, that was another big... There was thing. another yeah. thing, yes, I mean, <laughs> being whipped oh, by the wet blanket. Yeah. But they, they do feel the public, you see, that the army is consisting of, <coughs> well, bullying louts. And, 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 and stu stupid, I mean, I'm sorry to... But I mean, a lot of the people we're getting these days are just, uh, frankly, stupid. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the only person who, who thinks like this. No. Uh, mm -hmm. Who else? Uh, there's one other person, um, <laughs> the Lieutenant General uh, Anthony Palmer said uh, yes, just Anthony, last week. Yes. I, I, yes. He said that um, you know the trouble is the people we get at the army are are stupid. In fact, more we get more stupid people in the army than they do in the in the air force or or the, or the well, navy. Sure God knows right. why. <laughs> would you say? Would any of us here say that there is any connection at all between bullying in? the barracks yes. and uh, say the torture of Iraqi prisoners in Abu Ghraib. Well I think there is. Uh, I think th there is. I, 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 I think it's one, one is, is, is a conditioning for the other. I mean uh, let's not forget that w w the, what, what happened in uh, Abu Ghraib um, Apparently, the uh, the men were not trained to deal with civilians. No, you see, this is they had they had no yeah. experience of dealing with civilians. He's training vacuum. Uh, I mean, yeah. and so naturally, there they were, but unconfident with, with their victims on the ground, and they stood on their testicles and so on, and yeah. uh, simply because they didn't know what else to do. And, and what were you doing, essentially? And uh, this point has been made by the prime minister himself that we were having trained killers, mm. yeah. um, killing machines, killing yeah. machines yeah. your uh, CDI, CDI dealers, uh, dealers, dealers yeah. of death, yeah. Yeah. and suddenly they're not that anymore, they're police. They're police. I think the domestic police force could learn a few lessons from us, because yeah. you know, you get some kid pirating music off the internet, I mean, you know, put yeah. a bag over his head and run him around on a forklift truck for a couple of hours, and <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of course, it's not all bad, I mean, we've had a BC, haven't we, in the last oh, couple of weeks? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Not yes. just a BC, uh, but a, a black, black shirt. A black one. Yes, yes. 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 Yes, yes, yes. yes. He, uh, but he was non posthumous. He was non posthumous. I mean, the first yes, non posthumous VC. I mean, they'll be handing them out like visiting cards before yes. you know where they are. Yeah. I think I was non posthumous VCs are a bit suspicious, but it's, I, it's a bit like showing it's off. Like it's who, who, who look at me. Yeah. 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 There is a. You see, people are under the impression that the army is a completely chaotic, um, disorganised, um, right. contradictory. Mm. It's. It, it, all of this has been terribly carefully thought through. I mean, just in, in, in the training, which, uh, which obviously I've um, read a lot about, um, <laughs> it's very important that we, we uh, instruct people to follow orders. That, that's the, that's the well, primary that's the thing, about, yeah, is to follow orders. Yes, whatever whatever your orders, orders, orders yeah. are, you follow them. You don't, just unquestioningly, absolutely. unflinchingly, absolutely. you just follow orders. Now, yes. in a court of law, as we know from Nuremberg onwards, mm. uh, following orders is no defence. So if you're a, um, a squaddy, you have to follow orders, yeah. you do these things that you're told to do, it turns out that they were wrong, it's your fault. It's your fault. So that's no defence. Whereas giving an order, you see, is... is, is um, in the clear. Yes, no, yeah, no, no problem about giving an order. Are we in the clear? Oh, absolutely, yes. Well, well that's all I ever do. The chap, chap who told yeah. those people to, to no. run those yes. run those looters hard, whoever yes. that was. Yes. Um, in, yeah. in, in, in Iraq? Yes. In Iraq, yes. yes. yes well, yes, indirectly, yes. that was me. Was it? Yes, it was. Well, well, it, was it was. I rang up, um, uh, what's his name? Buffy. 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 Yeah, Buffy. In, yeah. in yeah. Batra. Yeah. And I said, you know, are you doing anything with a forklift truck this afternoon? And he yeah. said, <laughs> not really, no, there's some washing mm. hanging on it. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, well, get hold of some looters yeah. and right. hang them on it. Yes. Mm. Had someone told you to do that and you'd done it, you'd be... Yes, you'd be I would be in... Yes. But are we in the Fortunately, clear? you just had the idea and asked someone else to... Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so you're in they the clear. There's it. no. It's a diff. It's it's. You're in the clear if you give the order. Yes. 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 Right. Yes. If but if you follow the order, you're not. Yeah. If you oh. tell people go to war in Iraq, that's fine. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if you actually go to war in Iraq, you're in, you're in, you're in trouble. Yes. 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 Yes.
Having trouble keeping up with the news? No time to read the papers? Then subscribe now to the Conservative Party's new tabloid press service. The Conservatives, in association with Howard and Crosby's cutting agency, can now provide you with a carefully selected digest of last week's top tabloid stories, delivered direct to your doorstep using our brand new fleet of bandwagons. And for a limited period only, Tory Central Office guarantee to bring you yesterday's headlines in the form of a seven-point policy statement, in an easy-to-read format for people with no time to think. Don't delay. Subscribe to the Tory tabloid press service today. The Conservatives. Are you sinking like we're sinking? More responsive. More agile. More refined. Funny how wishes always granted in threes. The Debenhams Easter Spectacular ends tomorrow and there's up to 20% off throughout the store. The Easter Spectacular, 9 till 6 tomorrow. My bank gave me a great mortgage deal two years ago. It started low. But it's now about to shoot up! They think I can't move because it's too much hassle. My bank is having a laugh. <laughs> what do I look like, a fool? There is another way. If your mortgage deal with Halifax, Abbey or Cheltenham and Gloucester is ending, talk to NatWest. We'll lower your new monthly repayments or give you £100. We'll also give you a decision in minutes. No wonder we've been voted Best Bank for Mortgages a record 11 times. Of course, I used to be a biker. Great days. Yeah, man. The freedom. I used to ride a Harley. Karaoke 325. I had a BSM. A. It's the sound of freedom. Man, it burns through your soul. I'll definitely do it again. When? Next week. Yeah. yeah. Great. Uh, 118247. Hello, is that Hot Wheels? Motorcycle. Bike. Leathers. Guildford. Oh, no, Hello. Yellow Pages, yell.com or 118247. Whatever you want, just yell. If you can't get the mortgage deal you want, talk to NatWest and see if we could give you a better deal right now. While other national retailers may have price promises, only MFI has the lowest independently checked sale prices guaranteed. The place to buy is MFI. Tonight, live from the games, the girls take to the cycling track. Give me a hand, somebody. While the boys come belly to belly in sumo. <laughs> The games after Bremner Bird and Fortune. And finally, tonight's top media story, ITV, the nation's favourite television channel, in an exclusive poll of ITV viewers, <laughs> may soon be hit by a strike. Is the threat real, or is it just another repeat? It's the latest in a spate of crises to rock the world of broadcasting. All for it, the BBC. <laughs> As spring arrives at Shepherd's Bush Green, the question is which is going to bite first, the cuts or the Director General? <laughs> As dogs start to look like their owners, the lives of television bosses are starting to look more and more like their programmes, with the heads of channels playing celebrity job swap, executive salaries are crossed between national lottery and who wants to be a millionaire, and the new BBC boss Mark Thompson topping the ratings with a hybrid hit entitled when Director Generals go mad before they were famous. <laughs> what? What would it strike? What would a strike at ITV look like? Join us after the break. Will it be conducted with a traditional solidarity legendary in the television industry? One out, another one in? <laughs> 70 years ago, it was the people of Jarrow marching to London in protest. Today, it's the cast of Emmerdale being driven to ITV headquarters in minicabs. It's a historic moment. Cue David Starkey. 
and so the procession turns towards the capital, <laughs> led by the location catering truck from Bad Girls, followed by legions of heartbeat scene shifters, proud, dignified, lowering their eyes only to check their expenses. <laughs> Beyond them, the ever-swelling ranks of Michael Parkinson with brass band under the expert musical direction of Laurie Holloway, who places a megaphone to the great man's lips. What do we want? Another interview with Billy Connolly. Oh, I know we want it. 9.45 next Saturday here on ITV. Aye, aye, and then... <laughs> and then... <laughs> and then the strike spreads, the bill comes out in sympathy, Corrie's right behind them. There's a ballot at Rosemary in time. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, for the time on my hands, thought I'd join the all-night vigil outside the London studios. Wouldn't mind popping my log in Felicity Kendall's brazier. <laughs> Hold that thought. And in tonight's South Bank show special, a show of solidarity depicting the struggle of the working man. The working man in question being me, and the struggle trying to run a large television department, host numerous radio shows, write endless books, and still put in 40 hours a week at the hairdressers. <laughs> Soon they'll be storming the ITV headquarters with a list of demands longer than Mariah Carey's. But the one chapel that could swing the strike either way and has still to announce is surely the amalgamated union of ratings winners Ant and Deck ho 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 hello and welcome to our Saturday night takeaway and that's just what they've done they've taken away everything ho ho the whole lot the set the costumes the auto cue the audience ho ho we've been sequestrated ho 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 I bet that hurts <laughs> only if you get your assets caught the strikes cuts dwindling audiences what they need to save television is a big national event something that draws the audience in and is cheap <laughs> or a long-running soap opera or both right who'll start me off with a fiver like the idea of a single issue candidate but worried your vote may be wasted relax now you can cast your vote for a single issue candidate and know it will count here in the Lib Dems, we're doing away with all those national policies and encouraging each candidate to adopt one singular popular local cause. It may be transport or local schools, or perhaps it's a new bus shelter. Vince Cable will be campaigning against odour pollution from the Mogden Sewage Works and for better rights for beekeepers. And if that doesn't whet your appetite, Lembit Oping would devote himself exclusively to the impact of a proposed new radio mast in Cursus. Thanks to our policy of franchising out election strategy to local party activists, we can ensure every Liberal Democrat candidate is committed to just one single local popular issue, from asylum to abortion to dog fouling to poorly sighted speed bumps. The Lib Dems, passionate about something. We just need you to tell us what. Here in the Department of Education, Ruth Kelly has announced that in future, students of Latin at GCSE will only need to memorize 450 Latin words instead of 550. And in Greek, 365 words instead of 500. With less words to remember, more students will pass GCSE, and this will obviously drive up educational standards. <laughs> we have made it absolutely clear that is the reason we are rolling out this initiative. But which words to choose for the Latin course? Why not start with a phrase a student will hear every time a minister opens his or her mouth. Magnopere monstraminus, the Latin for we have made it absolutely clear. <laughs> but we mustn't be complacent. We've made it absolutely clear that there is much more to be done. Our target is to reduce the number of Latin words to be memorized year on year until they are at their optimum, namely four. <laughs> Suffragium novi laboris fair, or vote new labour. <laughs> Once this is achieved, students who can remember those four words and write their name correctly <laughs> will achieve an A grade, or in case of those with long and complicated names, an A star or A double star. <laughs> Of course, certain words will be prohibited by the department, such as mea culpa. <laughs> ah, good afternoon.
you miss your songs and how are we today? Better. Better? Better get me a bucket, I'm gonna throw up. Garçon, a bucket for monsieur? There you are, monsieur. Yeah. Merci, garçon. I'm finished. Oh, pardon. Garçon, a thousand pardons, monsieur. Today we have, uh, for appetizers, mm, asylum seekers with a joint of ladies' shoulders, and to top it off, a fetus of 24 weeks. <laughs> I'll have the lot. A wise choice, sir. And how would you like it served? All mixed up together in a tureen? Yeah. With the benefit scroungers on top. But of course. <laughs> And finally, monsieur, a waffle thin cut in defense spending. <laughs> no. Oh, go on, sir. It's only a little one. It'll help pay for those tax cuts you promised everyone. No. Oh, no way. It's only waffle thin, sir. I've already swallowed everything else. I'm not having that as well. Oh, go on, sir. Just the one. All right, then. Ah, very good, sir. Eh. Voila. <laughs> bon appétit. In the wagon of a travelling show Where Maggie used the to dance for the money they throw turning. Major do whatever he could And another thing Preach a little gospel Stand up on his soapbox made of wood Gypsies, tramps and thieves They're hated by the voters in the town We'll target gypsies, tramps and thieves And every night my campaign team gather round and vow to do them down. <laughs> Picked up a vote, made a bosh and a deal. Twenty weeks is the limit, I feel. So I voted for twenty-four. <laughs> Labour seemed to miss this. Milburn could have got me if he'd known what I'd done. Gypsies, tramps and thieves They're hated by the voters in the town We'll target gypsies, tramps and thieves And every night my campaign team gather round And vow to do them down Gypsies, tramps and thieves Embarrass Tony Blair and Gordon Brown We're after gypsies, tramps and thieves And every night my campaign team gather round And still the polls are down <laughs> Find out more about Bremner Bird and Fortune by pressing the text button on your remote and going to page 456.